It's obviously confirmed that we have an excellent crop almost all across, be it for wheat or rice uh, of corn and other cereals. So, Abdul Reza, let's uh, jump straight in. What do the latest value of the FAO Fruit Price Index tell us? Well, interestingly, uh, it's gone up again uh, in January, and this is a six months in a row that is increasing. So on that ground, we could say that uh, prices, at least from an international angle, because our food price index measures uh, prices, export prices in international markets, uh, at least in the international markets, uh, food prices seem to be going up a bit uh, of late. Uh, still, they are far, far below uh, the peaks they had, but uh, there, is, there is some trend to, to recent movements. Secondly, uh, prices of many agricultural food commodities have fallen sharply in recent years. Why do you think that is? Well, if you look at the prices now and compare them to their peaks among the all five main categories of, let's say, groups of commodities that we, we, we monitor, uh, we are down almost 30 percent. And for some, like cereals, as high as 45 percent below its peak. So, Yes, despite of some increases in later months, we are still well below. And these declines in prices have uh, been basically on an annual basis um, four or five years in a row. Uh, there are many reasons for this because you also have different commodities with different fundamentals. But the more general one, one could say, is a lot of supplies. Uh, we've had uh, generally favorable weather conditions for crops, let's say, in many major producing areas. Uh, and in general, we've had supplies exceeding demand. If you look at cereals again, you have, even for this year, we are expecting now a record production. And on the back of that, we're going to have record inventories. So just like uh, any other commodity, when you have situation of excess supply, there is certainly um, this uh, issue of uh, uh, you know, weighing on, 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 on prices across the world. But this doesn't tell it all. There also have been in interesting developments going on on the demand side. Uh, when we had prices rising so fast uh, back uh, six, seven years ago, uh, we had a situation whereby oil prices were extremely high. Uh, there was this genuine belief that uh, we could use a lot of agricultural commodities to produce biofuels. And all of those factors really were very supportive from the demand side uh, to what then was the situation, which was in fact tight in terms of inventories. Well, just the reverse is happening now. Look at oil prices, even despite some increases in recent, in recent months, they're still at a third of their peaks, just like with agricultural commodities. And at the same time, uh, we know what the level of the biofuel intake is. The demand is more or less, if not regulated, at least the market has a good idea of uh, where it goes, so it's all factored in. So no surprises coming from the demand side. And then there is the China factor, India factor. These big countries, back seven, eight years ago, in many corners, there was this fear that tomorrow would not be able to feed these countries, that this growth in the demand for agriculture and food in the populated parts of the world is just going uh, out of control and uh, uh, what is going to happen to supply? Well, as we have seen, this has not really been the case. The growth has been modest, uh, basically keeping up the population and the, uh, the supply has been quite capable of expanding and meeting those, that growth, at least until now. So it's really these two, I would say, fundamental issues. A lot of supplies, no surprises on the demand side. And generally speaking, that has resulted in putting pressure on prices to come down below their peaks. And what is the current situation in the grain markets with, with prices continuing to rise, even though there is ample supply? Right. This is a very good question because um, uh, we've had uh, now multiple months of increases in the, in the price of uh, cereals uh, on the back of a record crop. In fact, uh, we just come up with our latest production uh, number for 2006, and that is the production that goes into 2016-17 uh, marketing season. Uh, it's obviously confirmed that we have an excellent crop almost all across, be it for wheat or rice uh, of corn and other cereals. So one would have assumed that with such huge uh, uh, crops and with the fact that, as I 
just mentioned the demand side, there's nothing so exciting going on. Uh, we should be seeing a further downward pressure, but uh, this is not happening. Uh, one of the reasons is that this time of a year, we start looking into what is going to come up next, in other words, in 2017. Now, we have already seen and a few few weeks ago, USDA came with its first uh, numbers for winter wheat, for example, uh, and it showed one of the, uh, the second lowest seeding rate ever in the U.S. history. And the reason was simple. The returns... Uh, are not good from uh, many, far, many many corners of the world from farmers' uh, perspective. Uh, they see that the uh, at these type of prices, they're not probably very much interested to do wheat. They would go to more uh, more um, uh, let's say um, uh, rewardable crops uh, such as corn or soybeans or cotton. Uh, so all these things mean that there is a genuine belief that uh, in 2017 we're going to start getting some decline. Yeah, on the supply side uh, because prices are not attractive. So that has been one of the reasons. Another is has to do with what's happening on the, on, uh, in many countries. We've had a major, major, uh, um, I would say, uh, problems that during the first half of this season uh, with countries not coming into the market and purchasing the grain that they would have normally. Egypt take, for example, uh, there were many issues with the imports by Egypt uh, and also some uncertainties with the other countries because of big fluctuations, exchanges, and so forth. So the demand that probably had not been really uh, been met in the first half is now coming into the market. So you have actually a faster pace in demand. Uh, it's a short-term event. One should not take this and, and kind of project it forward. But at least for the, for the, for the next uh, six months or so, it looks like some of that demand we need to kind of catch up with. This is also very much for the coarse grain market, the corn market, for example, um, where we had even issues with some suppliers like South Africa and Brazil this year. So a lot of market is focusing on what is coming out of US, which is the world's leader in corn market. So these factors, I think, combine uh, has given us uh, some support, and again, I have to I have to emphasize we're talking about some support to to the grain market, uh, which uh, has been sustained for the last last few months, and I think we will get a better direction uh, when we know more about a uh, planting situation, and that would mean basically early springtime. Abdul Reza, thank you very much for speaking with Dukascopy TV. Thank you. And thank you for watching. And if you like this video and would like to see more, be sure to stay with us here at Dukascopy TV.